I have created the jinn and mankind solely for the purpose of worshipping me. This fundamental principle of creation is reflected in the teachings of Islam. Now, let me recount what the jinn reported according to the words of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as narrated by Ibn Abbas, one of the Prophet's closest companions and scholars. In ancient times, the jinn had the ability to ascend to the higher heavens to listen to divine revelations. These revelations were sacred messages and celestial secrets exchanged among the angels in the high assembly. The jinn, with their curious nature and desire for knowledge, used to lurk and eavesdrop on these sacred conversations. However, as soon as they managed to hear a single word, they would distort it by adding nine false words, thus creating a mixture of lies and falsehoods which they would then spread. This behavior continued until Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent as the last messenger of Allah. With his arrival, a significant change occurred in the heavens. The jinn were prevented from ascending and listening to the divine revelations. They could no longer approach the high assembly or spy on their conversations. Each time they attempted to do so, they were violently repelled. They were pelted with stones and pushed back by a divine force. This constant and severe punishment became their fate every time they attempted to violate the sacred boundaries. In the rare cases when they managed to catch a word from the conversations of the angels, it was immediately followed by a bright, blinding light that scattered and drove them away. This light was not only a physical punishment, but also a warning sign and a reminder of Allah's absolute power and omnipresence. The protection of the celestial secrets was reinforced so that the jinn could no longer interfere or alter the divine revelations. In the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Mulk 67-5, it is said, And we have certainly beautified the nearest heaven with stars, and have made them what is thrown at the devils, and have prepared for them the punishment of the blaze. These lamps, which adorn the night sky, also serve as divine weapons against evil spirits. Additionally, in Surah Al-Jinn 72-89, it is mentioned, and we have sought to reach the heaven, but found it filled with powerful guards and burning flames. And we used to sit therein in positions for hearing, but whoever listens now will find a burning flame lying in wait for him. This indicates that the heavens are heavily guarded, and any attempt at espionage is immediately punished with fire. The jinn reported this new situation to Iblis since previously, the stars were not used as projectiles against them. Iblis, cunning and always seeking to destabilize creation, deduced that this change must have been due to a significant event on Earth. With this suspicion in mind, he mobilized his troops to investigate further. It was then that his followers saw Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, praying between two mountains. When they reported to Iblis what they had witnessed, he immediately understood that this was the most momentous event that had occurred on Earth up to that point. Abdullah ibn Masud relates that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I was commanded to recite the Quran to the jinn. I asked, Who among you will come with me? My companions remained silent. After repeating the question two more times, I volunteered, saying, O Messenger of Allah, I will go with you. So we set out and arrived near Abu Dhab. The Prophet Muhammad Salallahu alayhi wa salam, drew a line on the ground and instructed me not to cross that line under any circumstances. Then he moved a little further away, and suddenly, creatures resembling small camels began to gather around him. These creatures beat the ground rhythmically, like women with their drums during festivities. They surrounded him so densely that soon I could no longer see him. Despite this, the Prophet gestured for me to sit and began reciting the Qur'an aloud. The jinn, attracted by the recitation, crowded around him to listen attentively. Finally, I saw them prostrating on the ground in deep reverence and attention. When the Prophet finished his recitation, he signaled for me to approach again. He explained, These jinn came to listen to the Qur'an. Then they returned to their people, saying, we have heard a wonderful Qur'an and have believed in it. We will no longer associate anyone with our Lord. 
It seems that our companion Iblis, brainless and full of deceit, utters false and malicious words about Allah, always seeking to mislead the faithful. Just as Adam, peace be upon him, is the father of all humanity, the father of the jinn is also a living creature created by Allah. The jinn were the first beings established on earth, long before humans, and reigned for two thousand years with power and authority. During their dominion, they shed much blood and caused chaos and destruction on earth. Some jinn, over time, adopted beliefs and religions, becoming Jews or Christians, reflecting the diversity of faith among them. The demons and devils are spiritual beings created from pure fire, that is, smokeless flames, which gives them an ethereal and powerful nature. Some jinn have the ability to take different forms, such as dogs or snakes, allowing them to move stealthily among humans. They have males and females, and at times, their malevolent influence can destroy families and cause great misfortune. Just like humans, jinn have very long lives, living for many centuries. And like us, they have the ability to lie and deceive. However, unlike humans, jinn can move much faster, with surprising speed that allows them to travel great distances in the blink of an eye. They are often found in abandoned and solitary places, such as the darkness of caves, empty bathrooms, near fires, or in deep bodies of water. Their food consists of bones and excrement, a diet quite different and peculiar compared to that of humans. Humans were created from the earth, and although we are made of the elements of the earth, we do not physically resemble it. Similarly, jinn were created from fire, but they do not have a fiery appearance. Fire jinn also divide into various races, each with different speeds and levels of agility, some much faster and more flexible than others. Not all jinn have the ability to move from their world to ours, but some races have developed this special ability. Some jinn can transport objects from one place to another with ease, while others possess the ability to temporarily disappear, becoming invisible to our eyes. It is important to mention that when you recite Bismillah and place an object, the name of Allah acts as a protective seal. This seal is so powerful that the jinn, upon seeing an object marked with the name of Allah, cannot touch or manipulate it in any way. This act of reciting the name of Allah provides an impenetrable barrier against malevolent influences. Additionally, some jinn have the ability to cause various diseases to the people they approach, transmitting mysterious and difficult to diagnose ailments. On the other hand, there are jinn who can alleviate certain illnesses and diseases, offering a kind of supernatural healing. Within the vast world of jinn, there are races that inspire deep and paralyzing fear, while others exacerbate the animalistic and primal desires of humans, leading them to commit impulsive and destructive acts. Legendary creatures such as witches, fairies, ghosts, and ifrits, which appear in many tales and legends, are actually different races of jinn, each with its own unique abilities and characteristics. Some jinn live among humans almost imperceptibly. Those with a malevolent nature are known as shayatin, and the most powerful and feared among them are called ifrits. Each race of jinn has a distinct appearance, reflecting the diversity and complexity of their species. Like humans, jinn have the responsibility to believe in Allah and serve Him faithfully. Among them, there are jinn who have accepted Islam and are devout Muslims, as well as disbelieving jinn who reject the faith. The shayatin, known for their malevolent nature and constant attempts to mislead humans, are also jinn. Iblis, the jinn who openly disobeyed his lord and was expelled from paradise, is one of them and the most notorious for his rebellion. Jinn were created from the essence of pure fire, sharing certain characteristics with fire, such as the ability to move quickly and change form. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah assigned to each of you a companion jinn. When his companions asked in surprise, and to you too, O Messenger of Allah, the Messenger of Allah replied, even to me, but Allah helped me against him, and he accepted Islam. Now he only orders me to do good, 
This teaching underscores the universality of the test of faith and the struggle against malevolent influences, showing that even the Prophet had to face this test. But with Allah's help, his jinn converted and now only inspires him to do good. An interesting example is that of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. May Allah be pleased with him. A companion of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who had a special place in his home where he stored his dates. One day, a mischievous jinn came and began stealing dates from that place, causing concern for Abu Ayyub. Puzzled and upset by the loss of his dates, Abu Ayyub complained to the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet, with his divine wisdom, advised him, When you see that jinn, say, In the name of Allah, come with me to the Messenger of Allah. Following this advice, Abu Ayyub captured the jinn the next time he tried to steal the dates. The jinn, trapped and with no escape, swore he would not steal again. So Abu Ayyub, trusting his promise, released him. However, the jinn returned and stole the dates again. Abu Ayyub captured him once more and this time brought him before the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who said that the jinn had lied and would surely return. On the third occasion, Abu Ayyub captured the jinn and told him firmly that he would not release him until he took him to the Prophet. Desperate, the jinn offered valuable advice. Remember this in your house, and neither jinn nor demons will come near you. Abu Ayyub reported this to the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who confirmed, although he is a liar, this time he has told the truth. This incident demonstrates the persistence of the jinn in their deceit and the wisdom of the Prophet in discerning the truth. Another story mentions a Bedouin who approached the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with great concern, complaining that his brother was suffering terribly. When the Prophet, always attentive to the needs of his community, asked what was causing this suffering, the man explained that a jinn had brutally struck his brother, leaving him in a state of constant pain. In response, the Prophet recited the first five verses of Surah al-Baqarah, Surah al-Ikhlas, and other verses from the Holy Quran. Miraculously, the man was immediately healed, freed from the torment inflicted by the jinn. Similarly, Khalid ibn al-Walid, may Allah be pleased with him, recounted that he had been possessed by a jinn, causing him immense distress and disturbance. Desperate and seeking relief, he went to the Prophet for help and guidance. With the mercy and wisdom that characterized the Prophet, he recited prayers and verses from the Quran, imploring the protection and assistance of Allah. This act of faith and devotion resulted in Khalid being freed from the influence of the jinn, restoring his peace and well-being. Then, the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, recited a specific prayer intended to protect against all the evils that may come from jinn, as well as from the creatures of the earth and those who ascend to the sky and descend, excluding only those who bring good. This prayer, full of divine wisdom and grace, has the power to provide comprehensive protection against malevolent influences. I recited this prayer following the teachings of the Prophet, and I was cured of my illness, said the man, testifying to the effectiveness and power of the words recited by the Prophet. The jinn had been responsible for managing and administering the earth long before the creation of humans. However, due to their great wickedness and corruption, causing chaos and disorder on the earth, they were eventually removed from this important task. Their destructive behavior and the violence they unleashed among themselves led to their displacement from their position of authority. Then, Allah appointed humans to take control, entrusting them with the responsibility of managing and caring for the earth. Thus, humans became the rulers and stewards of the earth, tasked with maintaining order and justice, a task that the jinn could not fulfill adequately. The Prophet Solomon, peace be upon him, used the jinn as workers in his vast and magnificent constructions, as well as to extract valuable treasures from the depths of the sea, all with the permission and grace of his Lord. Some jinn worked directly under his orders, performing various tasks with great diligence. 
If any of them dared to disobey his instructions, they were severely punished with humiliation and overwhelming suffering, ensuring that they remained in line. Under his direction, the jinn built impressive castles, majestic statues, enormous pools the size of lakes, and fixed cauldrons that served various purposes. Allah says in the Holy Quran, in Shura Saba 34 12 13, and we made some of the jinn to work for him, diving for him, and doing other tasks, and we had subjected to him. Solomon, the devils of jinn, every builder and diver. This verse highlights the control and authority Solomon had over the jinn and devils, using their abilities to accomplish extraordinary tasks that no human could carry out alone. Thus, the greatness of Solomon's constructions and achievements was partly due to the diligent and obedient work of the jinn under his command. The jinn live in a completely different temporal dimension from ours, where the passage of time is perceived differently. What may seem like a long period to us may be just an instant for them, and vice versa. Due to this difference in the perception of time, it is clear that the information obtained through the jinn is not about knowledge of the future. In reality, their knowledge is based on their vast experience and their long existence. Despite their abilities and wisdom accumulated over the centuries, truly the realm of the unseen, which is hidden from us, also remains concealed from them. Allah says clearly in the Holy Quran, in Shura and Naum 27-65, Say, none in the heavens and the earth knows the unseen except Allah. This verse underscores that not even celestial beings, including the jinn, possess the knowledge of the unseen. Furthermore, they do not know the time of the resurrection, an event known only to Allah. Thus, even though the jinn may have a broad perspective and great experience due to their longevity, their knowledge remains limited and does not encompass the mysteries that only Allah can reveal. In the Holy Quran, Allah informs us that the shaitan demons descend upon those who are inclined to sin and slander, those who deviate from the straight path. These demons continually whisper in their ears, instigating evil and sowing discord. Most of the words they whisper are lies and deceptions intended to lead people away from the truth. Those who consume interest and practice usury, according to the Quran, increase their wealth corruptly, as if they were struck by a curse from Iblis, who is the leader of all demons and the personification of evil. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Az-Zukhruf 4336, And whoever turns away from the remembrance of the Most Merciful, we appoint for him a devil, and he is to him a companion. These demons become inseparable companions of those who reject divine teachings, continually leading them down the wrong path, further away from righteousness and goodness. In the end, when these people face Allah on the Day of Judgment, they will realize the true nature of their demonic companions. In their desperation, they will say, Shaitan, I wish you were as far from me as the East is from the West. What an evil companion you are! Shura Az Zukruf 4338. This expression of regret and desire for distance reflects the realization of how harmful the demonic influences were in their lives. The jinn, although they possess extraordinary abilities and powers, cannot do good or harm to anyone without the permission and judgment of Allah, the Almighty Lord. In the Quran, Allah gives us clear guidance on how to protect ourselves from the evil influences of jinn and demons. In Shura al-Araf 7-200, Allah says, And if an evil suggestion comes to you from Satan, then seek refuge in Allah. Indeed, he is hearing and knowing. This verse highlights the importance of seeking protection and refuge in Allah against any insinuation or temptation from Satan. To reinforce this protection, it is recommended to recite Surah Al-Falak and Surah An-Nas three times each night and each morning. These surahs act as a powerful shield, protecting us from all dangers and evils that may threaten us. A human being must be aware that nothing can harm them without Allah's permission and must place full trust in Him. 
Devotion and prayer and the sincere recitation of these surahs with faith is fundamental to obtaining this divine protection. It is important to remember the words of the Quran. Say, My Lord, I seek refuge in you from the whispers of the devils, and I seek refuge in you, my Lord, lest they be present with me. Shura al muminan 23 to 9798 This supplication teaches us to turn to Allah for protection against any negative influence from demons, seeking His shelter from both their insinuations and their presence. By reciting these prayers and trusting in Allah, we ensure that we are under His protection and guidance, keeping us safe from any harm.